Okay, today we're going to look at uh, Venom Fang X's movie, The Age of the Earth. I'm going. This is going to be slightly comprehensive. I am going to use several sources, including uh, the Bible itself. I'm also going to use TalkOrigins.org, and I'm also going to use uh, Astronomy.com. These are going to be my sources, and uh, let's get on with the uh, rebuttal. Hi. Today we're going to talk about the age of the Earth. It's pretty standard fare for me to start my videos with a question. So, my question to you is, how old do you think this planet is? Some scientists say that the Earth is about 4.5 billion years old. I believe it's about 6,000 years old, like the Bible says. That's nice, I don't care what you think. Um, according to current data, most, if not all, scientists say that the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. Um, the only people who think that the Earth is 6,000 years old are young Earth creationists. Um, now let's play the next part. Who's right? I'm going to show you. You might find yourself asking, where in the Bible does it say the Earth is 6,000 years old? Well, it doesn't say it just like that, because if it did, the Bible would be outdated in one year. It actually does say indirectly that the earth is 6,000 years old. In uh, 2 Peter 3, 8 through 9, it says, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord a day is a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understood slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to re repentance. Um, this specifically, s and then uh, look at the six-day creation. So if we go by a day in God, a day with God is like a thousand years, therefore six day creation, six thousand years. There you go, that's six thousand years. Uh, let's play through this next part here. So, what we have to do is this. We have to flip back to the genealogy of Jesus Christ found in the Gospel of Matthew. And what it says there is, from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, all the way to Jesus, it lists every single son. You mean precisely, Robin? So, all we have to do is this, find from the beginning of creation, the six-day account, then from Adam to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all the way to Jesus, how old were these people when they had their sons? Clever. Devilishly clever. It just so happens the Bible lists the age of every single one of them. So, all we have to do is add up the dates. From Adam till Jesus was about 4,000 years, and then from Jesus till today was about 2,000 years. So, if we add 4,000 plus 2,000, and we can kind of you know, skid over the six days, because, you know, give or take six days is not going to make much of a difference. So, 4,000 years plus 2,000 years equals, I bet you can figure it out. Duh. Okay, actually, Matthew and Luke both, div both give different genealogies for Jesus, um, with little or no overlapping names. Uh, Matthew gives Joseph's father as Jacob, uh, that's Matthew 1.16, while Luke gives Joseph's father as Heli, that's Luke 3.23. Matthew traces the line through David's son Solomon, that's Matthew 1 6, while Luke tra traces the line through David's son Nathan, Luke 3 31. In fact, between David and Jesus, the only names gene genealogies uh, have in common are Shilatiel and Zerubbabel, that's Matthew 1 or 1 12 and Luke 3 27. And he keeps on playing these stupid um, clips from old television shows. Um, I don't know if those are copyrighted, so I would advise you not to use those in the future. Don't want you to get caught like Gizburn and Dragon Two Wolf or Wolf to Dragon did. That's not good. Let's play the next part. You may find yourself wondering, what science can we do to prove the Bible is correct and that the Earth is not 4.5 billion years old? None. It just so happens I know Kung Fu and a little bit of science, too. Before what? Are you, like, high or something? I don't remember seeing you ever do that before. Uh, just don't do it again because it kind of scared me. Uh, let's go through 155 through 213. Before we get real deep into this, I just want to say that the credibility of the Bible hinges on the age of the Earth. 
If I can prove to you that the Earth is only around 6,000 years old, that means evolution cannot be true, which means God created us. And the implications of that are incredible. In the I'll agree with those terms, but I'll show you that he is completely wrong in all of his arguments that he'll put forth throughout this video. Let's go on to the next clips. The Bible, the book of Psalms, chapter 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. What are the heavens? Well, there's three of them. There's the sky, which is right over there. I'm sure you've seen it before. There's the heavens above the sky, which is outer space. And then there's the third heaven, which is where God is. So we're going to look at the second heaven and see if we can learn about God and his creation and how to prove the Earth and the universe is only around 6,000 years old. Okay, let's get right into this. The sun uses 5 million tons of hydrogen every single second. So there goes 5 million. There goes 5 million. There goes 5 million. It just keeps going. Okay, so... If the sun has been consuming 5 million tons of hydrogen for the lifespan that the scientists claim the age of the sun is, which is about 6 billion years according to them, then the sun would have been large enough to swallow the earth only a few million years ago if indeed it had that much hydrogen. Absolutely impossible for it to be billions of years old, and thus the earth cannot be billions of years old. Uh, let's correct him. First of all, the sun uses 600 million tons, according to astronomy.com. He gives no sight to his own. Also, the sun uh, has at least 5 to 6 billion years left of fuel. Also, his argument hinges on the misconceived notion that the sun and the solar system are closed systems. That's not true. Uh, the sun and Earth also, and also the other planets, of course, get um, minerals and not minerals, well, I'm talking about biology here, uh, get, I guess you could call them resources from outside, it's their own systems. Also, it really depends on what model that he's talking about. If he's talking about a Big Bang, then, uh, then he actually might have an argument, but he actually doesn't. If you follow the plasma cosmology model for the beginning of the universe, then you interpret the evidence as meaning that the sun is more abundant in iron and it gives us most of its heat from reactions within the iron instead of hydrogen. And also... Uh, let's go through the next clip. Okay, now we're going to talk about our lunar satellite, the moon. Scientists, before we landed on the moon, speculated that there was a severe amount of dust on the surface of the moon because they thought the moon was collecting dust for millions or billions of years. So they thought when they first were going to land on the moon that the spacecraft would actually sink below the surface of the moon into miles and miles worth of dust. So, when we first landed on the moon, and if you actually watch the, the video of the first moon landing, you'll see these enormous pads uh, as like giant shoes at the bottom of the land, or sorry, the, the landing module. And, you know, they thought that those would help them kind of land softly on the dust, but it turned out there wasn't much dust there at all. So, they planted down these plates, collection disks, to see if the moon was actually collecting dust at all. It turns out it was. So, they took what was the rate of accumulated dust on the moon and they measured how deep the dust layer was on the moon and it turned out to be about a quarter or a half an inch so, so not much right so they took the rate of dust consumption and looked at how much dust was on the moon and they said hmm it couldn't have been collecting dust for more than around six thousand years uh, he gives no sight for the six thousand year claim at the end but also the story that scientists were worried about the lander uh, sinking to the dust is total fabrication. Uh, in 1965, scientists were confident that the uh, Earth's or moon surface was not dust-ridden. Uh, the, the Surveyor 1 in May of 1966 confirmed this. Okay, here is a quote from TalkOrigins.com. Uh, Doheyani's figure of 60 tons per day includes everything from slo slowly settling dust to the average input of meteorites. Doheyani's figure for the moon, which is uh, 2 times 10 to the negative grams per square centimeter per year, yields 2.3 tons per day. In 4.5 billion years, a layer of about 1.5 inches of cosmic dust would accumulate on the moon. On the moon, of course, a, a ton weighing much less. We're actually talking about a mass that would weigh 2.3 tons on Earth. End quote.